gonna do something crazy Gonna do something random It's gotta be stochastic It's gotta be StatQuest Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to talk about stochastic gradient descent and it's going to be clearly explained. Note, this stat quest assumes that you are already familiar with gradient descent. If not, check out the quest. The link is in the description below. This video picks up where the original leaves off, providing more details about how stochastic gradient descent works and some of its more subtle advantages. Now, even though I just said you need to watch the stat quest on gradient descent, let's do a little review to demonstrate the problem that stochastic gradient descent solves. In the stat quest on gradient descent, we took this simple data set, height and weight measurements from three different people, and we wanted to fit a line to it using gradient descent. However, at first we started out with this generic equation for a line. And the goal was to find the optimal values for the intercept and the slope. For example, if we started with the intercept equals 0 and the slope equals 1, then we could use weight to predict height. Then we would use the sum of the squared residuals as the loss function to determine how well the initial line fit the data. Note. The sum of the squared residuals is just one of many different loss functions that can evaluate how well something fits the data. In this case, that something is a line. To find the optimal values for the intercept and slope, we plug the equation for the predicted height into the sum of the squared residuals. Then we took the derivative of the sum of the squared residuals with respect to the intercept and with respect to the slope. Then we plugged in the values from the observed data into the derivative with respect to the intercept. And then we did the same thing for the derivative with respect to the slope. Then we plugged in the initial guess for the intercept, 0, and the initial guess for the slope, 1. We did the math, plugged the slopes into the step size formulas, and multiplied by the learning rate which we set to 0.01. Then we did the math, calculated the new intercept and new slope by plugging in the old intercept and old slope, and the step sizes, and we did the math, and we ended up with a new intercept and a new slope. Then we went back to the derivatives and repeated the process a lot of times until we took the maximum number of steps or the steps became very, very small. In this super simple example, we were just fitting a line with two parameters, the intercept and the slope. And we only had three data points. So we only had three terms to compute each step for the intercept. And we only had three terms to compute each step for the slope. So each step didn't require much math. But what if we had a more complicated model, like a logistic regression that used 23,000 genes to predict if someone will have a disease? Then we will have 23,000 derivatives to plug the data into. And what if we had data from 1 million samples? Then we would have to calculate 1 million terms for each of the 23,000 derivatives. In other words, we'd have to calculate 23 billion terms for each step. And since it's common to take at least 1,000 steps, we would calculate at least 2.3 trillion terms. So for big data, gradient descent is slow. This is where stochastic gradient descent comes in handy. Going back to our super simple example, Stochastic gradient descent would randomly pick one sample for each step and just use that one sample to calculate the derivatives. Thus, in this super simple example, stochastic gradient descent reduced the number of terms computed by a factor of 3. If we had 1 million samples, then stochastic gradient descent would reduce the amount of terms computed by a factor of 1 million. So that's pretty cool. 
stochastic gradient descent is especially useful when there are redundancies in the data. For example, we have 12 data points, but there is a lot of redundancy that forms three clusters. So we start with a line with the intercept equals zero and the slope equals one. Then we randomly pick this point. So we plug in the weight, three, and height, 3.3. Do the math, plug in the slopes, then multiply by the learning rate. Note, just like with regular gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent is sensitive to the value you choose for the learning rate. And just like for regular gradient descent, the general strategy is to start with a relatively large learning rate and make it smaller with each step. And lastly, just like for regular gradient descent, many implementations of stochastic gradient descent will take care of this for you by default. Oh no! It's a terminology alert! The way the learning rate changes from relatively large to relatively small is called the schedule. So if you fail to converge on parameter estimates, try futzing with this setting. In this simple example, however, we're just setting the learning rate to 0.01. Now we do the math. Calculate the new intercept and the new slope. Bam! The new parameters give us this new line. Then we randomly pick another point and calculate the intercept and slope for another line. Then we just repeat everything a bunch of times. And ultimately, we end up with a line where the intercept equals 0.85 and the slope equals 0.68. And the least squares estimates, aka the gold standard, gives a line where the intercept equals 0.87 and the slope equals 0.68. Bam! Note, the strict definition of stochastic gradient descent is to only use one sample per step. However, it is much more common to select a small subset of data, or mini-batch, for each step. For example, we could use three samples per step instead of just one. Using a mini-batch for each step takes the best of both worlds between using just one sample and all of the data at each step. Similar to using all of the data, Using a mini-batch can result in more stable estimates for the parameters in fewer steps. And like using just one sample per step, using a mini-batch is much faster than using all of the data. In this example, using three samples per step, we ended up with an intercept equals 0.86 and a slope equals 0.68 which means that the estimate for the intercept was just a little closer to the gold standard, 0.87, than when we used one sample and got 0.85. Double bam! One cool thing about stochastic gradient descent is that when we get new data, we can easily use it to take another step for the parameter estimates without having to start from scratch. In other words, we don't have to go all the way back to the initial guesses for the slope and intercept and redo everything. Instead, we pick up right where we left off and take one more step using the new sample. So we plug in the weight from the new sample, 1.1, and the height, 2. Do the math, plug in the slopes, then multiply by the learning rate, 0.01, do the math, calculate the new intercept, not from the initial guess, but from the most recent estimate, and calculate the new slope from the most recent estimate. And the new line has intercept equals 0.878 and slope equals 0.7. Triple bam! We updated the parameters for the line with just the new data. In summary, stochastic gradient descent is just like regular gradient descent, except it only looks at one sample per step. 
or a small subset or mini batch for each step. Stochastic gradient descent is great when we have tons of data and lots of parameters. In these situations, regular gradient descent may not be computationally feasible. And it's cool that we can easily update the parameters when new data shows up. Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support stat quest, well, consider buying one or two of my original songs or getting a t-shirt. The links to do this are in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!